Dear students, as you know that there are many types of RNA and each type of RNA has a specific function within biological system. Let me tell you that there are two broad categories of RNA. The first one are the coding RNA and second the non-coding RNA. As is obvious from the name, the coding RNAs, they code for proteins while the non-coding RNAs, they help in the regulatory process of protein uh, formation, that is translation, or even modern research has shown that they have very important roles in gene silencing and so on and so forth. Broadly speaking, there are five to six types of RNAs that fall into the categories of coding and non-coding RNAs. The most important one of them that we are also going to focus later today is the messenger RNA or commonly called the mRNA. Besides the mRNA, there are other types such as the transfer RNA or tRNA, the ribosomal RNA or rRNA, as well as the microRNAs and the small interfering RNA. Don't go by the name of small interfering RNAs as small because they also have some very important roles within the biological systems. So moving on specifically towards the mRNA, let me share with you that mRNAs only form a very small proportion of the total RNA content of a cell. So it is only between 5 to 10 percent. So essentially the coding RNAs, that is the messenger RNA which codes for proteins, is only 5 10%. Isn't that surprising? So what is the other 90% RNA content doing? All of that is non-coding regulatory types of RNA. The sequence for mRNAs is of course variable depending on how many amino acids they want to code. The size is also variable. The count of uh, nucleotides as well as function. So the function mainly is to carry information from the nucleus to the ribosomes within the, as a nucleotide sequence to code for the amino acid at the ribosomal sites. There are some other important characteristics of mRNA that you should know. First one is that the 5 prime end of the RNA is capped. It is capped by a molecule 7 methyl guanosine triphosphate, while the 3 prime end is also capped by a poly A tail. So, both of these caps they have very specific roles that they play to help transport the mRNA to the ribosomes. Once the mRNA reaches the ribosomal sites, the 5 prime cap helps identify or provide identification that the molecule that has just arrived is an mRNA. Moreover, these caps at the 5 prime end they also help protect the mRNA from the 5 prime exon nuclease. So, if the mRNA is damaged, of course, the protein that is translated will also not be complete. Both of them put together, 5 prime end and 3 prime end in the messenger RNA provide protection and hence enhance the stability of the molecule. As I just said, the 3 prime end of the mRNA is also a poly A tail, adenylite residues, and they also protect just like the 5 prime end, they protect the 3 prime end from the exonucleases, 3 prime exonucleases. At the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end, there are these caps and within these caps, there are these untranslated regions or simply called UTRs. So, they pad the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end together. So, the region that falls between the 5 prime end, the 3 prime end, along with the pads, the UTRs, within that, the nucleotides, the code for proteins. So, as you can see, 
the information is very protected towards ensuring that the protein that is formed as a result of translation process is consistently made. A cartoon is shown here for you to summarize the entire structure of the mRNA. As you can see on the left side, there is the 5 prime cap. After that, there is the 5 prime UTR, the untranslated region. And after it, the green coding region starts and it ends at the 3 prime UTR followed by the poly A tail. The coding region that is highlighted here in green comprises of nucleotides as well. You remember there are four types of nucleotides in RNA, A, C, U and G. So it's just a sequence of A's, C's, U's and G's. So how are they translated? They are taken as codons of three nucleotides at a time and they code for one amino acid. So three codons make one amino acid, the next three codons they make another amino acid and so the protein is polymerized and synthesized. So, we know that there is so much diversity in the RNA and there are so many types and their function. So, of course, if the nucleotide sequence in the RNA can vary, it can uh, result in variation in the structure of the RNA as well. And this variation in the structure leads to uh, enable the RNA molecules to perform a vast range of very important coding and non-coding functions. Hence, it is important to look at how these nucleotides come together as the primary sequence of the RNA and fold to form the secondary structures of RNA.